So I picked up a clue about uh, Ryan Zimmerman from his sermon uh, yesterday at Mariner's Irvine. He said he grew up in Chino Hills. See, I was always wondering because I thought maybe he came back, came from down south or back east. Not that he had a southern accent or anything. He had a just normal accent, I guess you'd say normal, but. Uh, uh, but I thought maybe because of the Bashores, I thought Kenton Bashore came from back east or down south. So I thought maybe both of them did. I don't know if, uh, you know, how he came to Mariner's Irvine, if there's some sort of nepotism going on there or not. I don't know if he's related to the Bashores. No idea. We don't get, I searched online for a little bit of information on that and couldn't find anything but so I just pick up little clues every now and then when when he uh, offers information and he said he uh, he told a story about shooting at a skunk in Chino Hills so he's a local boy I, I mean that's a little piece of information that helps me put the puzzle together a bit uh, you know he's local and so that'll uh, That'll make uh, certain parameters about how he thinks, and then he'll probably have some local buddies as well. And uh, I'm not a local, even though I have a lot of local history here in Southern California, but I came in late. I was in high school when we came out here. So I don't have many local buddies. I don't have any local buddies, for that matter, and, I mean, from, like, high school or anything like that. Because uh, I actually didn't go to high school here. I was a senior in high school when we moved, and then I just finished out there back east, and then slowly started coming back and forth, and then gradually this became sort of my home base. But never really had any close friends here, so I don't have that local, uh, local yokel uh, comfort, as you might say. But uh, that makes me. Uh, uh, a little bit more, you know, able to understand who he who he is as a pastor and the way he thinks. Because apart from the church talk and the, I don't know if he went to seminary. He did mention something in about Greek uh, in, in the same sermon yesterday. So that's the first time I've heard him dig into like the Greek uh, passage. He tries to be more hip. So he doesn't come off as like the preachy preacher who goes from the book. He preaches from his paper or, or the TV screen he uses, whatever it is. Um, and so, but anyways, uh, I just want to, you know, offer that information for anybody who's wondering. And, you know, I, I keep praying for Ryan and uh, ben, uh, Bashore, Kenton Bashore, and, and the whole uh, church there. I know the one lady uh, who's always at that one door. There's kind of an elderly kind of grandma-like lady. She kind of, I don't know what it is, but she kind of scowls at me every time I come in. So I'm trying to avoid that door. And uh, I just sit there and listen. And, uh, you know, I mean, I don't do rooted. I haven't done rooted. Uh, I've noticed that a few other churches, other churches do rooted too. So I'm wondering if that's like, something that are these churches associated or is rooted some kind of uh you know curriculum that some somebody invented and then various churches subscribe to anyways uh because i already went to college and seminary you know and so i feel like it'd be kind of awkward for me to go through something like rooted because that's not i'm already doing evangelism and and you know, I'm a pastor, so to speak, even though I'm not ordained by any denomination. I am ordained uh, in general, but not by my home denomination, which which is the Christian Reformed Church, in case you're wondering. I come from originally from uh, the Christian Reformed Church, which was a originally a Dutch denomination, Dutch-American. And uh, the Abraham Kuyper, John Calvin connection, you know, Things like that. Uh, and we have our own small churches here. We don't have any mega churches in Southern California. Or I don't think any of the Christian Reformed churches anywhere are really mega churches. Maybe some of the some of the ones in Grand Rapids, Michigan, those are probably the largest because that's where the largest uh, amount of uh, Dutch Americans still live. 
and also in Iowa, but I don't know. I wouldn't call any of them mega churches. Christian Reformed, a lot of them cater to that Dutch American, you know, heritage and and uh, connectedness. So, and I've kind of broadened my base since then. I went to seminary back east and then seminary out here. So I already am connected in that regard, so I don't know if rooted would really work for me. And so I just go to the church that's closest to where I am at the moment, and that's and that's Saturday evenings at Mariner's Irvine. And then I used to go to that 11 a.m. up uh, with, uh, what was that guy's name? He taught a class up in the upper room there. For a while I went to Doc Bushor's 9 a.m., but he passed away. I don't know if they're still doing anything at 9 a.m. there or not. They got somebody else leading that. But uh, I just keep them all in my prayers and uh, hope that everything works out well there. Um, Kyle sounded a little more upbeat this week. He was a little down and out and kind of gave a true confession sermon last week about how he had a strange interaction with a guy and his wife called him weird. I didn't know what, I didn't really know what to make of that, but uh, we just pray for Kyle to have confidence and, and not become too macho. He talked about playing being a football coach this week and you know, that's great. I like I've been going to Rams and Chargers training camp all week long too, right there in the Irvine Coast of Mesa area. But I don't like it when pastors become too macho in the pulpit. Already enough of a bully pulpit that you can control us as it is. So if you get over too macho, uh, you become overbearing actually, and emasculate the men. So keep it mild, keep it graceful, gracious. God be with you all at Mariner's Irvine. Keep the faith.